Hey everybody, Chuck and Stacy here with VO Buzz Weekly, and uh, we'd like to reach out and thank all of our new subscribers. Yes, thank you so much. Absolutely, we really, really appreciate, appreciate that. And uh, if you're watching the show and you're enjoying the show and you haven't subscribed yet, then please do so. Uh, what's going on today? We have part two with Tony Gonzalez. Come with us. Let's We're getting get buzzed. Buzz. Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to VO Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacey J. Aswan. What are the industry's expectations on young actors? Um, I think a lot of times they're, they're pretty patient with kids. I, I, I've, I've heard of, of times where uh, producers and stuff like that would work with really raw kids, and sometimes they would call me in to work with them, but... Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think they're pretty patient with kids. They want them to be good. Yeah. They want them to be successful. And I think that's the thing that they need to understand is, you know, they put so much, the kids put so much pressure on themselves. Yeah. And sometimes adults do too. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Where it's like, you know, in all honesty, they want you they're to be really side. good. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's cool. Well, that makes me feel more comfortable. <laughs> well, when we had um, the darling Zach Callison here. By the way, I like your shoes. Thank you. Uh, if you so wear a five, you can borrow them anytime. You know, Stacy, those are really those badass. are really cool shoes. Uh, thank you. They make a little bit of noise, so I yeah. can't wear them recording. But <laughs> well, thank you just you. can't wear. You just can't put your foot up here. Thank you, Chuck. Um, yeah, you know welcome. I like a good shoe. Um, but when Zach was here, uh, and Hi, you worked Zach. with Zach, hey Zach, such a talented, charming yes. young man. Yes. My goodness gracious! He was talking about you know when his voice changed. Oh yeah, and how that was a that really. That's a moment. You know, That's he couldn't definitely a, do what he did. He couldn't sing, you know, sing the same way. How do you kind of navigate that, especially if you've had a kid who's coming through or you're working with a kid who's in that in that, you know, realm that, of age group where they're they're not their body is not their own for a while. I, I think this is a common thing for boys once they hit 12, 13, 14, 15. It's scary, yeah, and the boys' voices will like the range will move all of a sudden from really this high area, and all of a sudden it's like, hey, yeah, <laughs> and Why? and they're still trying to talk like they're in this range over here, yeah. and that's when they start cracking, is 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 shifting from that that almost like a a head voice to a, a chest voice, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and um, I think it's a very a very big challenge for a, a lot of kids, and I think the advantage that uh, Zach Hellison had is that. He was training vocally too, musically singing, yeah. and that's a huge advantage for um, for a lot of boys going through that training is yeah. being able to exercise those skills yeah. for the vocal cords to be mm -hmm. able to, you know, broaden that range a little bit. And and you may not be able to capture where you were before up in this high range because yeah. you're all the way down here, but you can maybe capture a little bit and still pitch up your voice slightly. I think the huge advantage with Zach was that. Um, when he was coming out of his voice change for Prince James, uh, right. for Sophia, Sophia the First, the first. Yeah. he did an audition for uh, Steven Universe, for Steven. Mm -hmm. And when we first did it, he was still kind of like not sure of, you know, his vocal range was changing. And I was like, just pitch him down, dude. Just yeah. and we we had the whole recording. Were, Actually, you did you right have now. you watched that? It's it's a YouTube video. We did a, uh, yes. no, a YouTube yes. video. I haven't seen that. Watch the YouTube yes. video. Does it have a name? With that oh, sweet, video? That oh sweet gosh. Girl. It's an interview with Zach and Kiara. I for Kids Video. Um Kiara? Sierra. 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 Sierra Wilson did the mm -hmm. interview and yeah. it, and she did a fantastic job. She and, did. and basically we play back the original audition that Zach did for Steven Universe. Oh, I pulled it up out of my files and and we played it back. Yeah, that's a great interview. I did see that, yeah. But it's, it's it's definitely like a challenge. I think a lot of guys, I'll, I'll get called in a lot of times for for some people from, I won't say anybody anybody's name, but I'll, I'll say Nickelodeon or, or somebody from Disney. They'll, they'll let me know that somebody's, somebody's going through some vocal changes. Can you work with them? Mm -hmm. um, and I'll help them out. And, you know, a lot of times it's, Keeping those vocal cords lubricated, like just mm -hmm. warm teas, warm hot teas, um, entertainer secret. You yes. guys ever use that? Absolutely. Yeah. Entertainer secret. One of our sponsors. Um, 
uh, inter- use the entertainer. Wow, I just hit your sponsor? Yeah. yeah. Sponsor. Woo! Thanks for that. Checks in the mail, buddy. Thanks for that. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, using those those things to keep the vocal cords lubricated when, when they're just feeling strained mm-hmm. because it gives them a chance to stop, take a deep breath, drink some tea or take a spray yeah. Yeah. and then reapproach that line and be a little more comfortable yeah. and you know take find a way around it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm sure it feels like an eternity, but it's not forever, boys. No. Why don't you tell us, Tony, how you found your way into this wonderful world of voiceover? Because, well, voiceover and then casting, directing, and now coaching. Um, well, I, I think if I if I go back really far. Yeah, go back. <laughs> go back really far. Yeah, go back um, really far. I started... Maybe not that far. I, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back. Is that better? I started when back. I was... <laughs> uh, I think I, I had always been involved in, in theater, um, I, I had trained in some conservatory with Tracy Roberts and and uh, some really brilliant improvisation um, yeah. uh, professors. Mm-hmm. My improvisational teacher mm-hmm. had had trained uh, people like Steve Carell, and it was a, a gen- it was called the Generic Improvisational Peep Show. We had toured with that. I had done theater. I had performed and and done different things. And I always loved the acting um, part of things, but I was always drawn to the directing mm-hmm. and and working with the actors sort of side of it. Yeah. And then I went in to, you know, my parents were kind of like, oh, you need to get a real sort of job. <laughs> and I, you know, I, I listened to them. I, I got a, a normal job. I was like, okay, I'm going to go work at Disney. And I went and worked at Disney. I, back in 95, I started working with the interactive business. Mm-hmm. And it was great. It was, it was an amazing time. I met a lot of people, made a lot of friends. And my network grew exponentially in that time. Yeah. And then um, shifted into ABC, um, and I'll call that my Devil Wears Prada experience. Mm. Uh, and then, um, then I shifted again into Disney TV animation doing casting. Mm-hmm. And that was amazing. It was an amazing job. I, I, I feel like when you pick up the phone and they're like, hey, this is such and such from Disney. Yeah. This is Tony from Disney. You know, everybody wants to know you. Yes. Everybody wants to meet you. But, you know, at a certain time, you know, w- when you take that away, you know, there's something else. And I wanted Absolutely. more. I felt, I felt there, was, there was still motivation for, you know, wanting more to work closer with the talent. Mm-hmm. Right. And I think a lot of times agents would call and say, how did uh, such and such do? And I'd be like, oh, they were great if they just would have done this, this, and this, where I wasn't even thinking, like, yeah. that was really important. I was like, oh, yeah, they did great if they just would have probably done this and this. They probably would have went further in the process. I didn't think that was a big deal, but mm-hmm. the agents pushed that information or, you know, gave that information to the talent, yeah. and it helped them. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't find yeah. this out until years later. Yeah, yeah of course. But, but uh, yeah, it, it, I think I've made my way from, from that and shifted, and I thought I was going to be an agent, mm-hmm. and then a couple of agents were like, no, you should definitely be teaching, because every time we would call... Um, you had really Something great information yeah. for yeah. the actors. Yeah. Um, tried it out with a couple of actors, yeah. and they were on the, kind of like the chopping block for yeah. being let go from their agency, mm-hmm. and they started booking. Mm-hmm. And I was hooked. It was yeah. probably one of the most fulfilling things that's so I've great, ever done man. in my entire yeah. life. And I mean, I've done a lot thing. of cool things, yeah. but yeah. when, you know, meeting someone like Will Smith or Will Ferrell at, 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 at recording studios and yeah. sessions is cool, but yeah. when you change someone's life and help mm-hmm. them book a job, that's really something in, that you well, feel. Well, that's something that, yeah. you know, you, it's, 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 and it comes off of you. I mean, it's, you, it's, it's your soul. It's your passion. There's no, you're it's your not. Soul. You're Absolutely. not putting it on, Definitely. so that's that's great that you're getting to live your truth and helping I'm other people. I'm fulfilled and blessed. Yeah, in that. Love that. Your coaching is so different than mo- most other coaches because you come from a casting and directing background, which right. most coaches don't. Right. Um, I think it's it's kind of interesting a lot of times because I I feel like. There's a lot of, and I, I'm, I, I don't think it's a bad thing at all, I think, but I, I think it's, like you said, a different perspective. But yeah. I, I feel like sometimes when you have bad situations where you have the blind leading the blind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that's a bad situation. Yeah. Where they're not informed enough and they don't know what the inside structure is like and yeah. what's happening and how things are done. Yeah. And they're just 
coaching or, or you know feeding them reads right. and I think this is what I did that worked a couple times exactly and exactly and I think that's a fail yeah yeah uh, but I think when 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 you have the insight yeah the knowledge base yep you're it's going to be more effective, I think. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, and you I call guys that are the why factor. The why factor. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, okay. the why factor. Those that know how always work for those that know why. Mm. And so you know why they needs to be how it needs to be in order for them to book. And most of the time, you're coaching with an actor who knows the how. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just well, I you, like that. Yeah. It kinda, but it kind of <laughs> reminds me. It kind of reminds me of the the story of the the guy who 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 goes to fix the boat, yeah. and <laughs> and nobody can figure out how to fix the boat, and then some guy just comes over with a little hammer and hits it in one spot. Yeah, and he says with the bill, and it's like, yeah. Well, wait, wait. How, how come you only hit that? You hit the hammer in that little spot and charge us ten thousand dollars? Well, it's you're not. I'm not charging for how much time I spent on it and charging because I know where to hit it. Exactly. Mm. But you guys have a similar uh, perspective because, you know, with your demo production, with your coaching, you guys have great relationships with agents. So, so you now know... I know where to send all the people that need demos? Mm. Bow, 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 bow. Well, that, <laughs> demos at well, that kind of... Busy. I wasn't, there, you go. there you go. The transition is done. I wasn't, I wasn't feeding that, but thank you for <laughs> taking that. But I am uh, good. Checks in the mail, um, Stacey. No, but you guys <laughs> are, are respected and have a good bat phone line to the agent so you know what's what the buyers want and what and so that's a really a really great thing that you both offer um because you're not just operating in a vacuum about oh this is how it was done or this is how i think it should work you're actually in the real life scenarios I, and i definitely i th definitely have a feeling about demos too i, I feel like okay when an actor is ready to do a demo, there mm. has to be a time when they're ready to do it. Absolutely. I feel like, because yes. I feel a lot of times I'll get approached and they'll say, I want to do a demo with you. I'm I like, do voices. I, I do voices, exactly. Mm. And it's like they're not ready for it. Yeah. And by the time we get to the end of the demo, they're at a whole nother level. Yeah. And that's kind of a fail in itself too, yep. to where, you know, I tell a lot of actors, get your training first. Absolutely. Then do your demo once yeah. you're at a certain skill skill set, yeah. mm -hmm. because you'll be at a different skill set, you know, with your training. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I definitely feel like the demo is valuable for you know agents and and casting yeah. to listen to. But you definitely have to be ready for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love and it's, and the, don't the, make the person doing the demo do all the work. Well, but yes. not only that, because well, check this out: if you're not ready service. for the demo, you're only showcasing. On that demo, that you're not ready. <laughs> exactly. That's, That's exactly really right. what you're selling, right? Yeah. So definitely be ready. The other thing is, if the producer makes spends a ton of time and makes you sound amazing, and you can't do that, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly right. Yeah. Now you're really in a bad situation. Yeah. When you think about your career so far, uh -huh. what have been some of the most valuable lessons that you've learned that have helped you? Yeah. I think the biggest thing is network. Um, even for young kids, it's like build up your network. I tell my kids when they go in for uh, a major callback or audition, mm -hmm. meet people, know people's names. So if, if you go in and and you go into an audition um, for the first time for a callback and you introduce yourself to the engineer and he's like, I'm Paz. Nice to meet you, Paz. Well, let's say you go in you know, two weeks later because you get another callback mm -hmm. and you're like, hey Paz, how's it going? That's yeah. invaluable because yeah, now yeah. producers and everybody are sitting in there and they're like, wow, does he come in here a lot or does she come in here a lot? Mm -hmm. That's invaluable. So meet people, create your network. Yeah. Um, that is going to you know, pay dividends in the long run. No, but oh. I, my dad always says, you know, talk less and listen more. And it's really, it's oh, really. I, th I think that's, it's I important. think that's definitely true. You, you, the, the kids, when they get to meet you know, top people in the business, yeah. that's a huge opportunity. Yeah. Absolutely. And yeah. you, I, we've, I've done it mock, mock-ups of callbacks mm -hmm. where, you know, I've invited friends that were casting directors and stuff like that to, to, to workshops. Um, usually I'll do my intermediate group sh groups. Um, I'll only do individual sessions one-on-one -on -one through the basics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then once a student is at an intermediate level, then we'll do group shops, yeah. group workshops. Yeah. And I've done them before to where uh, a casting director would sit in and I would ask the question, what did you think? How, how did you feel about that? Yeah. And it's like, was it memorable? You know, do you remember anything about that person? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If they don't remember you, 
and you didn't make an impression, yeah. that's a loss. Yeah. Yeah. So you want to really enjoy that time that you go in and you're meeting with a casting director, make an impression. Well, yeah, because the impression is usually made not behind the microphone. Right. Yeah. Right. It's in the moment before you go in. Mm -hmm. It's what you do behind the mic. And then when you leave, it's yeah. all of it. Yeah. It's all of it. It's the whole thing. The whole Did you get that? Picture. I yeah. hope you wrote that down, stick it on your fridge, and remember that tomorrow when the you go to that the big entree giant and the audition dessert. that you got for the that whole... big giant thing. <laughs> um, yeah. So what are some things that you've seen at callbacks okay. or live auditions or callbacks that maybe you say these things are really good, like you just said, right, right coming right. in mm -hmm. and what you're doing coming in and coming out. But what are some things that you've seen that are completely not cool no, that you've no. seen that you that nobody should ever do at a callback? Um, that's going to leave a bad impression. <laughs> Walk off mic. <laughs> I, you know, it's kind of funny because we were. Uh, I, I remember at Disney we were auditioning some on camera um, actors, mm. and uh, <laughs> this one guy he said his line, and, and then he started acting <laughs> like he was walking around the room, and we're like. Uh, what are you doing? Yeah, you can't do that. Um, but I, I, I don't know. I, I think um, should you? Tell I've seen, I've seen cell phones. I've seen. I saw a girl. Uh, her phone rang inside the booth. I was like, mm. "What the hell are you doing?" Yeah. Um, I, I definitely think that's a big no-no. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. What about um, uh, uh, taking pictures with uh, the folks there at the session? Yeah, that's weird. I've, I haven't seen that before. I, well, I would say and that and would be really posting. weird. That would be weird. Yeah, okay. What's that would your be really feel? Weird. What's what about feeling? telling jokes? Yeah, I think that would be really weird if somebody was right? like taking so... pictures in the middle of. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> I like that you guys were on it. You're like, baby. Yeah, it's like, wow. Um, uh, but what about what's your feeling on it? How do you advise your your students as far as social media? And posting about what they're doing, you know. I think a lot of times, a lot of times, I, a lot of times there's and, the confidentiality agreements mm -hmm. that they have to sign, and yeah, definitely don't post up those things. But, but I mean, you could hint that you got something big in the works, but I wouldn't post up details. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you know, I, I always tell my clients to put things into perspective. Nothing is what it is till it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and nothing you is put, never what it is till it, till it is. is. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. You, could, you could book a job, and you could go in and record the first in the first episode or first, um, you know, pilot series or something, and then all of a sudden things change gone. and yeah. you're yeah. gone. Yeah. So nothing is until it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So. Um, and so earlier you were talking about being blunt. Yes. With the yeah. kids. Okay. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to be blunt with the parents. All right. So what are what is some advice, blunt advice you okay. would give to the parents of maybe things they should be doing or not doing with their kids that want to have a career in voiceover? Okay. I I I think a parent had told me this before that they felt like a chauffeur. They just drove them there and showed up and they I think a lot of times they're glory you know the parents have to take on that role of knowing mm -hmm. when to step back yeah you know there's a lot of parents that can be overbearing and they have to know when they need to take a step back be the chauffeur let their kids shine mm -hmm. they'll do it on their own yeah it's not your job to kind of promote them or do anything for them in that in that time frame yeah so if they're in for a major audition or a callback Go out in the hallway, have some coffee, relax, chill out until they come out, come back out. You don't need to be involved in that whole process. Um, and even meeting agents. Uh, for the first time, somebody meeting a new agent, um, a kid trying to break in with a new agency, the parents need to step back, let mm -hmm. the kids do all the work. Even if they're young, even if they're five, six years old, let them do the work, introduce themselves, say hi to everybody, and then if the agent wants to talk to you, for business stuff, they'll come out and talk to you. Perfect. Yeah. 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 That's good. Yeah. I like that. Mm -hmm. And turn your phones off. Turn your phones off. Yes. Turn your phones off, parents. Yes. Yeah. And no put gas selfies. in the car. You, no gas selfies. In the car. No make sure selfies you, in the meeting. You got gas in the car. <laughs> yeah. So you're not make sure you have gas, gas in the car. On the yeah. Yeah. Time. Time. Leave in plenty of time. Uh, <laughs> no one wants to hear, oh, there was traffic. <laughs> yeah. Pack them a snack. Pack the kid That's a snack. True. Make sure yes. they got, <laughs> Make sure the snacks uh, are not soda because uh -huh. you don't <laughs> need to show up all sugar. The kids don't yes. need to show, show up all sugar. And a milkshake. 
Yeah. Um, what else is it? Cheese, no cheese or milk yes. before major auditions because mm -hmm. then they just saw Fleming. And even Fleming. chocolate. Yep, and chocolate. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Hey, man, I think we got some pretty good stuff going on yeah. there. I'm telling you right now, if I had a kid, which I don't, <laughs> but if I did, I'd call you for yeah. the kid and then I'd let you the kid do this. When thing. you do? You know what? <laughs> you know what? That's it. We're going to have kids. Okay, We're going to have kids because I want Tony Just to train them. This. That's it. You heard it there here it first. I heard um, it here. So, so, <laughs> so crazy. <laughs> so kidsvo.com. Uh, yes, kidsvo.com. You can actually uh, send us a message at info at kidsvo.com. Okay. And um, and we can find you on the Twitter and the Instagram. Uh, Instagram, uh, Tony Kidsvo, mm -hmm. at Tony Kidsvo. And uh, there's also uh, Facebook, Kidsvo. Yeah. Great. Beautiful. Great. Um, awesome. We're going to put you on the spot. Okay. Yeah. On hey, we spot. got one last question for I you, I wasn't Tony. on the spot already? Yeah. <laughs> no, this you were in the tiny, spot. Tiny light. Okay. okay, is this a, the pick cube a of questions or something? Yeah, just pick Ooh. any card. And then you can, you can read I'm it. I'm so I can bad at this. All right, let's see. The only right answer is the truth. Okay, so am I reading it? Yeah. Do you want to read okay. it? Or you wanna, Do yeah. you want to ask it like a question? No, you ask it like a question and answer oh, it. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> What's your favorite part of Thanksgiving dinner? Ooh. Mm. Hmm. Wow. Uh, I would say my favorite part of Thanksgiving dinner is uh, pumpkin bars that my aunt or my mom make. Oh, nice. Graham cracker crust? Uh, or... I think it's like graham cracker crust. Nice. Um, or cr the bottom, the bottom part, yeah. Yeah. But it's like a lot of cream on the top. It's super <laughs> yummy. Does this help? <laughs> no, I love pumpkin. So I'm like, I'm like swallowing. So I'm like, I love pumpkin. Uh, pumpkin bars. <laughs> my pumpkin favorite. bars. Pumpkin bars. I think that's my favorite part of Thanksgiving dinner. Never had a pumpkin right. bar. Oh, and family, of course. Oh, <laughs> you know, saved by the bell on that one. You almost had it. You Ooh, almost yeah. had it. Woo! <laughs> family was like, what? <laughs> yeah. What about us? We did not edit Make anything. The pumpkin bars. There was no editing in that answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So great. Hey, man. You're going to edit that part out, right? You are such Absolutely, a joy. Thank, Thank you, you guys. so much for being so cool. here. I'm honored to be here, you guys. Thank you so much We're for so, inviting so me and having me. We're so thrilled to have you here. And thank you for all you do and for all those amazing kids that you are sending in the right direction with thank you. confidence and knowledge and professionalism. Look at She's on it. She's got it. She memorized yeah. that already. Absolutely, dude. You'd be She's the like bestest, a freaking... best student. Actually, the bestest, best mom for a student. Whoa. Whoa. Hey, we're going to let you well, guys go with that. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> hey, guys. I'm Tony Gonzalez, and I just got buzzed with Chuck and Stacy, and they are amazing and awesome, and I'm in awe of them. Um, advice for you guys. Remember, um, be professional out there, um, increase your knowledge, and be confident. Love you. Well, that's all we have on today's show with mm -hmm. Tony Gonzalez. We hope you guys have enjoyed the show. Yeah. What a Such great, a great guy. Great guy. Yeah. And also, there has never been a better time for the young generation, kids, Absolutely. to get into voiceover than ever before. Yes, because a lot of times they want actual kids to do the voices, not adults to play Exactly, kids, so. and it didn't used to be like mm -hmm. that, and that's a big trend right yeah. now. So if you have a little one running around, start training them <laughs> now so you can take over the world. Exactly. We're gonna be back next week with another show, so make sure you check it out. And keep up with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, you guys. We love you, thanks for watching, and just remember, you, you always, always have, have time, time for, for a little, little buzz. buzz. Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo That Rock. Rock. The voiceover demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit DemosThatRock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for a little buzz.